Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today is our 100th quilting vlog, and we are going to be reviewing da -da -da -da, the Reindeer Crossing quilt. So I finished this quilt completely, including the binding. Yes, yes, did it all. And this is the first quilt that I have done a quilt label on. So I want to go over the good, the bad, the ugly, and the awesome associated with this quilt. And also, I want to thank all of you guys for sticking with me through to the 100th quilting video. That's pretty awesome, I think, in my opinion. Um, so, first thing we're going to talk about on this quilt is, what is it? This is the Reindeer Crossing quilt. It was designed by Vanessa Gortzen, and this is the little booklet that I purchased. I did purchase this as a quilt kit from an Etsy shop. I'll have that link down below. But if you just wanted to buy this beautiful design booklet here, it would show you everything you need to put it all together, including um, all of the fabric requirements. And you could choose your entire layout. Maybe you want to use completely different colors. Maybe you want to do green Christmas trees and red Christmas trees. That would be beautiful. And yeah, it's a gorgeous quilt. Um, so I think if you're interested in it, oh, size of this quilt, it is supposed to be an 80 and a half by 80 and a half quilt. Mine turned out about 79 inches by 79 inches. So not too bad or maybe say 79 and a half it was pretty close so there's always a little bit of give and take I feel like um, with my quilting very rare that I come out to the exact size that it's supposed to be but it's close enough is good enough in this instance and I'm very happy with how it looks so let's talk about making this quilt now I have a whole video series if you haven't watched that I'll link it somewhere down below, wherever, if you want to check that out of me actually going through and making this quilt. I would say the hardest part of this quilt is these right here, these beautiful, beautiful reindeer antlers. Just really, really finicky, but I was able to do it. It wasn't too bad. And then from there, the rest of this quilt is so large, it comes together really, really easily. If you're used to doing half square triangles, then you can get these Christmas trees done really quickly. And again, like I said, I bought this as a kit so that it would look like this little guy right here, but uh, there is another quilt kit out there that I think has more red in it. So if you're interested in that, I would look for that. But again, I think you could choose any Christmassy fabric. And I mean, if you wanna have a multicolored reindeer, go for it, you know, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna do, the sky is the limit, right? So overall, I think it was a pretty fast quilt to put together. So there was just, you know, like I said, the antlers, and then also just with the back and forth nature of the Christmas trees, you wanted to really pay attention to make sure that you were lining everything up correctly. Yeah, okay, so on to the next part. The next part is gonna be the backing. So this is an old time Christmas backing. It did not come with the kit. I knew I wanted to do a red backing because it's Christmas and I feel like I needed a little bit more red in my quilt. Also, I knew that the binding on this quilt was this beautiful red here. So I thought it would just be a nice transition to have this red and then on the back have this red. It also has, you know, reindeers on it. It's got Santa on it. it. Talks about, you know, tree farms and stuff. I just felt like it really went well with the quilt itself. So I was very happy with that purchase and I think it turned out really nicely. 
I also purchased that on an Etsy shop. I think they're sold out of it from the one I that I looked at, but I'm sure it's somewhere else. So Old Time Christmas is what it was called. I don't remember who it was by. I'll try and look and link it down below. While we are talking about the back of the quilt, let's talk about my quilt label. So this is the first quilt label that I have done on a quilt and I did it separately. I just happened to have a gray piece of fabric which went pretty nicely with the front. And I used my brother embroidery machine to embroider. So this is a Christmas gift for my mother-in-law's family. We do a secret Santa every year. This is actually Cross Finger is going to be the first year that we actually get to give it out. So last year I did the Pinehurst Christmas quilt, but our Christmas party got canceled due to COVID. So I ended up just giving it to my mother-in-law. So she technically won last year. This year I'm hoping we'll get to actually do it in the whole Secret Santa thing. I just, I think that'll be really fun. And I plan on making one every year for this. So I'm looking forward already to picking out another Christmas tree quilt. I really like Adidas Sitar's one that's like the multicolored Christmas tree. So I've been looking at that one. And that one would be really fun, I think, because of the multicolors to do like some really fun um, free motion quilting on it. So I'm gonna be checking that out. Let me know if you would be interested in me doing that one. I don't know how many quilt kits she has available, but I also really wanna do an Alaskan quilt, but I'm not sure I'm not sure I could give that one away if I did that one in Christmas. I feel like I would end up keeping that one. That's what, why I haven't bought one of those yet. Okay, so the good and the bad of my quilt label is it did take me a couple of times to get my spacing right. And the main thing, um, I did do fusible batting on the back so that I could lay it down nicely and then sew it across the top. That's the part that I probably don't like the most. So I did this quarter inch seam across the top. But if I can flip it over here, you can see that that line is also on the front of it. It's not super noticeable. I did do it with the same thread as the rest of it, but it just bothers me a smidge. And um, overall, in the grand scheme of things, not anything major. But next time I may, if I do another quilt label like this, I might hand stitch it and I'm not one for hand stitching but in this instance you know you've worked so hard on the front and just to have that one line I don't know it's a little distracting to me I'm the only one that knows it's there I bet most people wouldn't even notice it so you know take it with a grain of salt sometimes it's easier to just get it done and that was a fast and easy way to do it in all honesty okay so we've talked about the fabric the design the backing the quilt label let's actually talk about the quilting itself. So for the quilting itself, the thread color that I decided to choose was, you guys know I love glide thread, so it is glide thread. It is glide linen and some people don't like it because of the sort of that shimmer that you get on it. I really don't think that that is that noticeable on quilting. So if that's one of the things that's sort of putting you off from glide thread, I would recommend maybe buying a little one or maybe like if there's like a sampler, you know, get a little sample one. Sometimes they'll send that with you with thread. You can choose like a little sample one, um, which is actually so the quilting or the quilting on the binding. And with this, this is actually Glide Sultan is the thread color and it just went perfectly and it's really well hidden. Um, that red thread throughout there. So if you're looking at, I, I just really like glide thread. So don't be afraid to use it even though it's a little shiny. It's not like it's like, you know, what is it? Glitter that's thrown in your face here. So it's not gonna like shimmer in the sun like a vampire or whatever, right? It's just a little bit of shimmer to it. I really feel like it's more of a selling point than actually a big, difference on your quilt. Maybe some people disagree. Maybe some people are like, oh my gosh, it's so shiny on my quilt. But I really haven't felt like it's that noticeable of a difference to warrant not using this. And I have been so in love with the glide thread and the magna glide. I had zero nesting on this quilt. No nesting at all. And changing thread super fast, super easy. And that's the primary reason why I use it. Now, I should try the Filtech. They have pre-wound bobbins, and again, one day I'm gonna do it. 
but it's just so hard when something works so well and so easy after struggling so much with some of the other threads, it's really hard for me to branch out. I know I need to, but this is what I used. Now, why did I use it? Let me, let me go into that before I get in a crazy tangent here. The reason that I chose this linen thread is because there's so much white in this, in this right here. And I know there's some really dark sections. So like the brown is really dark. All of the little noses, those are super dark. And even that gray thread is fairly dark. But overall, the quilt has a lot of tree blocks that are really, really light in color. And I felt like anything else that I used just wasn't going to look right. I put the gray thread on there. I think that that honestly would, would be an okay choice to use like a light gray, but I personally just liked the look of the white thread on it more than I did the gray thread. I felt like it just stood out a little bit too much in all of these areas. So that's why I chose it. I don't think there's a a bad choice. Had I been free motion quilting this, I may have switched it up a little bit more um, and chosen like a brown thread for the actual reindeers to do them. I probably would have done that in, in complete honesty. If I had been doing this free motion, I would have changed thread because it is really, really noticeable. Now, I think that's a good and bad thing, right? So it could be bad if you're not doing a good job at quilting, then you're highlighting this like, oh, that doesn't look right. I feel like for the most part though, if your quilting is smooth, if you're keeping it flowing, that you're gonna end up with a good look, whether your thread is really showing or not. You know, and that's my personal opinion. I feel like most things in quilting, as long as it's smooth and even and relatively spaced, it looks fine, right? If if it's not, then I feel like you get a little bit more of a drawing of attention to that section, okay? So also another reason that I used the linen thread was I hadn't used this color thread and I had it. And I do tend to like to use different threads if I can. I think changing up my thread colors just really helps me to see it on different quilts so that as I progress through my quilting, I'll have a better idea of yes, I used this on this quilt and liked it and that one on this one. It'll just help in the long run to choose some different ones. Maybe that'll end up with some thread colors looking a little bit crazy on some quilts, but I think overall it's just going to help me in my journey with quilting. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about here is going to be the actual quilting. So we talked about the thread. Now let's talk about the quilting. I have got the... I don't want to rip it here. I've got the pantograph that I used. This is what that pantograph looks like. So why did I use a pantograph? I will tell you honestly that last, let me roll this up. So why did I use a pantograph? Last year, whenever I was looking at pattern and quilting ideas and Christmas quilts, this pantograph kept popping up in sort of my thread and feeds and places that I was looking in. I really did like it, which may be part of why it popped up because I clicked on it to look at it. And so I kind of really wanted to use it, but I had never done a pantograph before. And so I was nervous about purchasing that, but I knew I wanted to, for, you know, I wanted to try it. I wanted to give it a go with using a pantograph. I had a quilting table that I could do it on. So I thought, why not try? So when I purchased this quilt, I had already purchased this pantograph. And what it meant for me was, in my mind, that's what I saw on this quilt. And so at one point, I was nervous that this pantograph would be actually too big and I wouldn't be able to complete the entire quilt with it. After I did the Harry Potter quilt pantograph, this quilt was actually smaller. The design is actually smaller, so I knew I would be okay to use the pantograph. But prior to that, I tried to come up with some ideas and I just had a really hard time. And I think that part of that is my mindset at the very beginning of this was just not in pantograph mode. My mindset was in, or excuse me, my mindset was not in free motion quilting mode when I was making this quilt. And I feel like when you're sewing and piecing a quilt together, you're kind of thinking of all of the cool things 
I feel like whether you know it or not, but whenever you sit down and you start piecing it and you're thinking, I'm going to do this cool pantograph on it, like none of those thoughts were in my head of what I could be doing with these. So when I sat down and kind of looked at it, everything I did just didn't seem right. So once I knew it would fit, I 100% went with this. And I'm happy with how it turned out. It's not perfect, but I do think that it turned out good enough. And overall, honestly, I, I really think it looks fine. It's not perfect, but I do really think it looks okay. The spacing is really pretty good. I definitely improved on my spacing compared to my Harry Potter quilt. So working on that sort of spacing as I was moving the pantograph from one point to the other, I do think I improved on that, whereas there were a couple spots on the Harry Potter quilt that I thought my spacing was not quite right. So that is something that every time you do something, maybe it's not perfect, but trying to be consistent. And I also think just trying to practice. Practice makes perfect. I know somebody on the comment section mentioned that they just didn't think it looked good on one of the quilting videos. And, you know, for somebody who maybe has watched some of these quilters on YouTube that have been doing this for years and years, no, I am nowhere near what they are for sure. But I think that all of those people started at some point. And so I am starting and sharing the long arm quilting experience with you at the beginning. So no, mine is not perfect, but I also think that's important for people to know because we're not all gonna be like robot machines like some people are. And so knowing what's gonna work well for a beginner is important. And I think this design is beginner friendly. Whenever I finish my current quilting project, I will show you what is not beginner friendly because I'm really struggling with one pantograph right now. So overall, am I happy with this quilt? Yes. Overall, do I think the person who gets this quilt is gonna be happy? Yes. Um, there were definitely struggle points. Some of my antlers are probably not the same. Um, some of my, you know, free motion quilting, maybe not exactly on point, but I think that this quilt is really great. I think it's still beginner friendly. It's gonna be a little challenging in some parts, but overall I think any person could make this quilt. And if you guys have any questions about it, let me know down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me if you've been here from the beginning. And um, way to go us on getting to 100 quilt videos. That's pretty awesome. So I hope to see you guys next time on The Little Quilter and have a wonderful day and happy holidays.